What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Talking Time Pieces with Tony. I'm Tony. And it is Friday. It is the Q&A, generally called the Ask the Magic Watch Ball. Um, magic Watch Ball. Uh, this is uh, just a humorous sort of take on wacko trying to commit suicide off the couch. Dude, why do you keep doing that? Um, and... <laughs> Anyway, it's, uh, you know, for, for new viewers, are you guys going to do this every fucking time? Every time I do a video, the cats have to, like, start playing right in front of me or fighting in front of me because they want all the attention. And I just got home today, so, I mean, I haven't been here more than a few minutes. Anyway, um, I should probably stop this and restart, but... Anyway, sorry. The ma Magic Watch Ball is for... Uh, people that, you know, in, in the industry, a lot of people that think that they have a crystal ball and they can predict the future of watches, blah, 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 all that stuff. This is just a humorous way to ask a, a, a piece of plastic a, a question. And uh, she's a smart ass. She can answer you however she wants, whether it's rude, nice, smart ass, whatever. And, uh, but uh, then I put my two cents worth in and then sometimes the questions are just for me, like today. There is no questions from the Ma Ask the Magic Watch Ball. But if you do have a question that you want answered, just drop a comment and I will uh, answer your question on an upcoming video. So let's uh, roll the intro and we'll get started. All right, so the last couple of weeks, my, I had just had so many questions. I was like, man, I'm gonna have to break these up into two parts, but I don't have to do that this week because I got hardly any questions, so that's, that's fine. But um, so let's just start. I got uh, BT DeWitt7 asks, do you think the, that Ro do you think Rolex intended these for lefties because it seems like it's most, mostly right-handers buying these and wearing them the wrong way on their wrists. Are righties actually wanting the lefty setup or just tolerating it because it's the only way to get the sprite colors? All right, so you're, you're making a comment based off of uh, the GMT sprite. I did a review on that watch, or I had, a, I had it. Um, I don't know, dude. I think people, I mean, who, who actually goes out of their way to buy left-handed watches like uh, you know I mean I wear on my right hand I, I'm also gonna say this you okay fucking a you guys you wanna walk on me you, you wanna walk on me come on dude is this what we're gonna do today <laughs> no one's gonna watch this video <clears throat> um, so and that goes to your second question. Are you a lefty or do you just wear watches on your right wrist? I'm a lefty, so I was hoping these would be more attainable and hoping this becomes a trend since us Southpaw weirdos comprise 10% of the population and need some love too. Um, dude, for one thing is, um, I mean, obviously there's left-handed people out there and do left-handed people really strive to get a left-handed watch? We, we live in a world where everything's right-handed from whether you got a notebook and you got the binding side on this side and the pen and then the ink used to smudge across the paper. Um, and you're asking me if I'm left-handed. Primarily, yes, I write with my left hand. Um, I play tennis with my right hand or I'm stronger in my right arm. I'm stronger in my left leg. I would bat left-handed. Um, and again, like I say, play tennis right-handed. So I'm kind of all over the place, but I am primarily left-handed. And uh, you know what? I have a left-handed watch. It's a U-boat IFO left hook. And I don't like the way that the crown goes into my wrist when I do things like this. So I've been wearing right-hand watches my whole life. In fact, I don't call them right-hand watches. I just call them regular watches. The left-hand watches are the weird ones. Um, and besides, when I put that Sprite on and I was wearing it, I didn't like it. It was just backwards and weird to me. So um, I think people just want something that they can't normally get. And if they get it, they say they want it because of the colors or, or just the fact that Rolex came out with a new watch and it's the... Everyone rag when Rolex come out with new watches. Everyone in, in YouTube land does videos about how bad they suck and they hate them and they hate them. Yet everybody wants them. You know what I mean? Oh, and then I, yeah, I did this shitty review on it, but now that I have it in my hand, I've changed my mind. 
anyway thanks for your question dude um, Alfie aka Ronald Dog he's a regular commenter and question asker on my channel uh, great video as usual thanks not sure which one it was you were talking about but I have a question for next time do you think guys like Andrew Morgan uh, Watchfinder and his little gang Brittany and Russell constantly bash Rolex to encourage hateful comments from people not actually buying anything and make money is harming the hobby have you ever considered doing a poll because that's two questions um, okay so Watchfinder that's the British guy and today we are and he does the talking hands or whatever is that the guy I think that's him I'm not sure who you're talking about with Brittany unless it's that Brit Pierce chick um, and Russell is that his counterpart um, it's weird because they they do kind of bash Rolex sometimes don't they but yet they sell Rolex on on Watchfinder so you're kind of it's kind of a weird thing you know what I mean why would you bash something that you're trying you're promoting a channel or uh, also you know Watchfinder you're looking to sell or buy a watch you know I don't know I think it's just a bit of fun um, no matter what you talk about you're gonna get haters commenting and haters commenting and these none of these guys own watches they might have a Seiko that you know their their granddad left to them or something I don't know but you know these are people that people that just hate and bad I can't you know it's really hard for me to believe you know in in today's world although I guess there's a lot of young kids that do have money now that are buying Richard Mills and things like that that just they're, they're clueless and they don't know you know they don't I don't know they don't know the value of a dollar but generally when you get people that hate like the ones that you know that are straight Omega fans and rag on Rolex yeah I would imagine they don't have anything you know what I mean it's like fucking Omega man they're fucking better well do you have an Omega and a Rolex that you can compare the two or are you just fucking saying that you know what I mean boy do I have a foul mouth today don't I <laughs> sorry um, you know I don't know dude it's I don't I don't know I don't know um, and have I ever considered doing a poll no I like chicks dude so sorry um, I appreciate your comment though um, and then you have a second question um, it says hi Tony I have a deep question that may be that may be UK specific and or you may not want to answer in London we have a lot of vicious Rolex street robberies I know man Paul Thorpe talks about it a lot um, our national radio radio one plays a lot of Rolex rap rap that goes on and on about Rolex and AP ownership how how much do you feel the uh, this influences street crime um, as a bit of disclaimer I grew up in Brixton you will be familiar with it from your time location in the UK and love hip-hop rap and Stormzy I don't know what Stormzy is but feel there's a problem that needs addressing um, yeah you know and for those of you who don't know where Brixton is if you live in the United States or say California it would be almost the equivalent to South Central LA you know Compton area things like that but there's bad areas all over in LA but I guess Brixton like there was the Brixton riots <clears throat> I think it was in the 60s I'm not sure um, but Brixton is the primarily um, and I don't know if it still is to this day it's primarily African-American um, it's sort of it was a low-income area a lot of other parts of England are low income as well but um, and when you say low income it's still very expensive to live out there but at the same time that's that's what what it is it's it's a, a high crime area um, London in general is a high crime area um, and so do I think uh, rap yeah I think a lot of it's influenced by that stuff man just like when you know um, two the Fast and Furious movies came out you know in the United States everybody here's got Honda's with the, you know and all the fixed up cars you know with um, Paul Walker rest in peace and all that stuff you know that's how it was for a while anyway I think people get influenced especially the younger generation they feel that they need to have a Rolex or whatever and whatever they have to do to get it by any means they will and it's you know and I know that in England the the crime watch crime is a lot higher different in the United States than it is in in the UK so <coughs> excuse me so yeah I think I think a lot of it I think there's a lot of things it could be TV shows whatever it is influences kids you know what I mean it's just it's just the way it is and um, you know it's it kind of sucks but yeah sorry man that's uh, that's about the best I got for that um, this comes from Paul Browning 5376 now he had asked me a question about the, um, the Longine versus the Omega SMP 300 and I can't remember the initial which which 
Longines you're talking about, but you did a sort of follow-up and said, um, do you think the S&P is worth the extra money over the Longines Spirit? The Longines Spirit, there you go. Are you a fan of Longines? Um, yeah, Longines are a great watch, man. They're a great company. They're very underrated. They, you know, they, they're, a lot of them are cost certified now. Um, and so they're doing a lot of great things. And it also depends, man. With you're looking at sort of an S&P 300 is a really, really good watch. You know what I mean? It's uh, you know. So if you're looking for, a, you know, I mean, I don't. I think it's whatever you want. But I think, I think I would go with the Omega over the Longines for that specific thing. I think there's other watches I might go for a Longines, but. But yeah, I would spend the extra money, you know, it's just something that's a little bit more prestigious on your wrist. Longines are great, they're coming, they're, they're moving in the right direction, but they're just not quite there yet. They're not, not saying that their movements aren't or their watches aren't, you know, it's finding their way, you know what I mean? In a sense, you know, they've, they've got a big following and they make a lot of watches, just like Omega, they, all, they make a lot of freaking watches, you know what I mean? But they're, um, yeah, they're, 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 they're I, I don't know, man. I would go with the, uh, the S&P 300. Anyway, this video sucked. So, <laughs> but I really appreciate everyone who watches and subscribes. And uh, if you, again, if you guys want to ask, ask a question, then by all means do so. And, and uh, yeah, I'm going to sign out, man. I'm going to have a beer and just chill. <laughs> That's one of the, whatever.